From 1954 until 1989, work at the Savannah River Sites M area resulted in uranium process waste that was directly disposed into sewer outfalls, leading to the Thames Branch Waterway. With funding from the Department of Energy's Office of Science Subsurface Biochemical Research Program, a team from SRNL, Argonne National Laboratory, Clemson University, the University of Georgia's Savannah River Ecology Laboratory and others is now studying the 43,000 kilograms of low-level uranium that's concentrated in wetlands there. So this is a project looking at why wetlands are so effective at attenuating uh, contaminants when they're released into the environment. And by attenuating, what I mean is why do wetlands have this ability to concentrate contaminants what makes this particularly interesting is that the contaminants move roughly two kilometers before it hit this wetland, and then once it hit the wetland, it started concentrating. So the question that we're asking is, why did it not get attenuated near the source? Instead, it got attenuated right in this wetland. To help find the answers, a team from SRS, Clemson, the SR Ecology Lab, and Augusta University are performing walkover gamma okay. surveys of the right. affected area. Right. We'll the walkover survey, which poses no health risk due to the type and the low levels of radiation, will provide data with 500 times higher resolution than earlier helicopter overflight mapping. And one of the things we want to know is how accurate are those helicopter readings and can we do a higher resolution map by walking with these backpacks. And so we got to cover a lot of area in this wetland and to do that we need a lot of people and so we're bringing down small armies of students every couple of months and walking different areas in the wetland and eventually we'll cover the majority of it. So there's nine of us that were out in the field at a given time so you had the backpack with a gamma detector. We had a tablet that had GPS uh, associated with it. And very sequentially, we went over the, the contaminated area. And what happens is this instrument takes a measurement every second. And in real time, you can actually see how much radioactivity is going on. The research is also helping with DOE workforce development. Well, that's a, University that's students currently studying health physics, geochemistry, and radiochemistry get real-world, hands-on experience. You know, it's, it's neat to get to be able to do work out in the field like this. This is something I've always really enjoyed, and I think that it's great for students to see that in at least a health physics career, your job can sometimes have your office be walking around with a backpack for, you know, a few days, and that's a really nice change of pace. I think it's a really good experience to get to be out here and see that. The walkover and flyover gamma surveys provide two-dimensional mapping. Samples are also being sent to the DOE's Argonne National Laboratory in Illinois for synchrotron light sources measurements. ANL are world experts for categorizing uranium in complex environments. They have a facility there called the Advanced Photon Source. This is an instrument that's about the size of a football field. We take samples from here and we can understand what is the state of that uranium. Is that uranium in a form that can be easily released into the water and flushed down the river, or is it strongly bound? Is it bound as a mineral, or is it bound to, say, organic matter? And so what we're hoping to learn from this is long-term stewardship management of the site. The soil is wetter, but that promotes a lot of other different processes. There's chemical processes, microbial processes, and of course there are very unique trees uh, that are grow in those areas. As it turns out, those are all interacting together to create a system that is uh, much more likely to attenuate the movement of contaminants than just upland, what they call upland soils.